Uh, but we're going to basically talk about Jace Tingler now. Um, give him a lot of praise after that Dodger series on how he managed the bullpen and how he's been doing. But lately, like Chase brought up in, in another episode, he's been kind of making some questionable decisions. You know, the lineup has been it's been constantly changing. And I don't, I mean, it's hard to blame him because, you know, there's been some missing pieces, but at the same time, something needs to be done about it. The bullpen hasn't been, hasn't been, uh, uh, we don't think it's been used properly. A lot of people are starting to come out and say he's Andy Green 2.0. And I think when we hired Jace Tingler, when we hired Jace Tingler, that was kind of everyone's thought, including mine. I was like, oh my goodness, this is going to be Andy Green 2.0. Because being realistic, the only reason he was hired by us is because AJ Preller has connections to the Rangers. And so he knows him through the Rangers organization. But Chase, you probably have a lot more issues with Jay Singler than I do. So I want to hear him. I think we all want to hear him. Yeah, you know, I am still on the we should have fired Ron Washington train. Jace Tingler loves his boys from the Rangers. That's why, you know, Joey Gallo is always in these trade rumors. But you know, I feel like Tingler sometimes is more of a yes man than he needs to be. And this does the best decisions in the bullpen. We saw this in the Rocky series, and I mentioned it earlier. Austin Adams isn't a ninth inning guy. He's not a guy where you put him in with the base loaded because you know he walks a lot of people. He walks a lot of people, but he strikes out a lot of people. But sometimes he gives up those hits, and we saw it. It backfired both times he came in into high leverage situations. He's like a nice sixth inning, maybe seventh inning guy, and then. You guys have a tied game going into the ninth inning or bottom of the ninth against the Rockies, and your closer is not there. Mark Melanson, I don't remember the last time I've seen him pitch, and he's just kind of been non existent. You know, you could have thrown Pagan in that situation, you could have thrown a couple other people in that situation, and it probably would have worked better than Austin Adams. I'm a huge Austin Adams believer, but I don't believe in throwing him in the ninth inning because he has that potential to let the game get away from him because of his pitching style. And, you know, you put your closer in there so that you can get into the 10th and score some runs and then throw in another guy, you know, and feel safer. But no, you let the Rockies walk it off in the ninth inning because you put the wrong guy in there and you don't put the rock of the bullpen that has been probably the best Padres reliever and the biggest surprise out of all the offseason acquisitions. And he's nowhere to be seen. I'm fully on board with that. Um, you know, Austin Adams, I completely agree. He's a little more of a mid, mid-inning guy just because he does walk a lot of people. He has that potential to plunk someone at all times. Um, but he is just a fifth, sixth, seventh inning guy because if you're down by one or even in a tie game, you need a couple strikeouts. He could definitely do that. Um, he strikes people out. Like his K per nine is 13.5, so it is really high. I believe it's the highest in our bullpen. So, yeah, if he's definitely a mid-inning guy. He can't go out there in a high-leverage situation. And why wouldn't you throw out, you know, your – he's been NL reliever of the month once or twice already, and I believe he's – I don't know if there's weekly awards for that, but he's probably won some. Easily been the best pitcher out of our bullpen, especially when guys like Pomerantz have gone down. Keller's out for the season. Uh, you know, we have some injuries in the bullpen. We have to send Ryan Weathers to uh, – we uh, – what, what is it called, Chase? Doesn't need Option. to be <laughs> yeah. Okay. We, uh, we op- yeah, I'm gonna restart that. We optioned Ryan Weathers, so it's definitely been it's definitely been a lot of missing pieces, a lot of moving pieces in the bullpen. He's probably been the most constant one. So you got to wonder why he didn't throw him out there because you know that was a really good situation to put him out there. You're on the brink of getting swept by the Rockies, and you don't want to throw your best reliever out there. That was very concerning because you want you got to want to win that game, and I think you set yourself up to lose by throwing Austin Adams out there. And, and yeah, I do like Austin Adams. I think he's, I, I don't, you know, I'm not as big of a believer as Chase, but I do think he's a good pitcher. I, I don't hate him. Um, not like Stammen levels like last year. We absolutely hated Craig Stammen last year. Um, but, you know, anything else, Chase? Uh, yeah, I'm just going to go in on the whole thing with Melanson again. You, your team is on a giant skid mark of a road series. I think as a manager, you know what, really need to win this game starting into our homestand so that we can look forward to this and the fans and show them, hey, we're playing good baseball and we're going to continue playing good baseball in front of all of you. But he didn't do that. He put in a guy that, you know, blew the game. You don't put in your best reliever to try to stop this horrible series that has happened on the road or just the past couple weeks of baseball. 
you had an opportunity to put an exclamation point on, hey, you know what? We're turning things around and he didn't do it. So I'm just kind of disappointed in Jace Tingler. And that's maybe me being too harsh on him, but I expect better from our manager. I don't blame you for being harsh on them. I think every single every single team is harsh on their managers. Look at the Dodgers fans. They they tear apart Dave Roberts a lot of the time. And he's a really he's been a really good manager. Whether you think it's because of how talented his team is or because of how good of a manager he is, you can't deny that he has a really good win-loss record. You know, they won the World Series last year. Obviously, they had some some playoff meltdowns the years before, but you just can't deny what he's done with the Dodgers. He's done very well. Um, and they still rip him apart. You know, they, 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 I've seen some really bad things said about him. And so I, I do think every single fan base in all of sports definitely talks about upper management um, being an issue. And for me, I, I completely agree. You know, Jace Tingler does not put out the best lineups. He doesn't really put out the most consistent lineups. Um, I, I, I love Tati batting four, but I think one or two is best for him because he's the catalyst of our offense. He's the electricity of our offense. And, you know, having a guy at the top of the lineup to really start it off, I think that'd be huge for the Padres right now because they're missing that that burst of energy, that burst of electricity from their guys right now. Um, but, you know, the real issue just has been with the bullpen. You know, I feel like all managers do have bullpen issues at times, but sometimes, you know, especially yesterday when we're trying to win a ball game to avoid getting swept, uh, it was just not the right time to put in Austin Adams. And, and it was a really good time to bring in your reliever of the month.